Hi there, I'm John Castro and welcome to John's IT Vlog. And today I basically want to share with you a little bit of a, a nice little project that we had going on at our church. So just to explain a little bit of what we uh, were trying to do. So there's two churches that meet at one location and we have our lobby area and in our lobby area we have a TV, a big um uh, flat screen TV and uh, so we were thinking about uh, displaying slides and slideshows and videos to that TV uh, and be able to do it from our church and also be able to do it for the other church that meets in the same place and so we were thinking about the best way possible to do this uh, without having to necessarily depend on any other device and so uh, initially we were thinking about doing um, a casting device like a Chromecast and so we tried it for one Sunday but we realized that we had to have an active device casting to it, like a phone or a computer. Uh, and so that dependency was not working too well for us. And so I came up with, it, with an idea that I think uh, is going to work for both of us. And that is with the amazing Raspberry Pi 4. So let me just show you how we... Um, um, in, in uh, set up the Raspberry Pi 4 and how uh, we're thinking about going with this as far as uh, showing some slides and showing some videos and so a couple of things that I had to do on the back end from the Raspbian with the uh, operating system for the Raspberry 4 and uh, see how that's gonna work so stay tuned for that. Hey guys, so here we are with our newly installed Raspbian for the uh, Raspberry Pi 4. And so the idea once again is to be able to have a TV that would be able to display videos, slideshows, uh, and some other stuff like that. We, we realized that the Chromecast was not enough and so I came up with the idea of just installing a Raspberry Pi in the back of the TV and just have it in there and have a wireless keyboard and mouse and be able to just load up whatever we need, whether it's slides or videos or live streams, whatever is needed for that particular TV, we're going to basically set up this uh, Raspberry Pi into a little media center slash slideshow um, presentation tool etc. So one of the first things that we need to do here is set up a new user because remember we have two uh, congregations that are going to be using the same Raspberry Pi so the first thing that we're going to be doing here is to set up a new user for them to be able to access the um, their session in order for them to have their own files their own uh, settings set up um, and everything else so what we're going to do here is um, we're going to type in sudo add user so that's from the terminal here we're going to be doing that so uh, add user and their name is going to be the name of their church city hope so now we're adding a new user and now we're gonna set them up with a password and retype And so then the system prompts for you to be able to fill up some stuff if you like more information on this specific user, so like full name, numbers, etc. But we can leave that blank for now. And now all the information correct. Yes, enter. And so there we have a new user uh, that is going to be called City Hope, which is the name of their church. Now the next thing that we would like to do here is to give some privileges, user privileges to the City Hope group. Uh, so we would like them to be able to get into the command prompt and to the terminal and to be able to install new apps or do um, uh, things with a little bit more of a privilege. And so in order to do that, we're going to be adding them to the sudo group. Now, if you see here, our username is still pi. And so if we type groups pi for our current user, which is the original user that we have, we, we can see all the groups that we belong to right here. And so including administrators and sudo, etc. And so we would like to give the City Hope uh, the pseudo group privilege in order for them to be able to do a little bit more just than a limited user. Now, as, as you can see, if we type groups 
City Hope. They only, it says they belong to City Hope, meaning that they do not belong to any of those groups up from up above. So now what we're going to do in order to add them to the pseudo group, we're going to type sudo add user city hope and sudo, which is the pseudo group. And it's done. So we successfully added city hope to the group pseudo, and that would give them more privileges for them to be able to um, do whatever they need to do with super user privileges. Now, before restarting the Raspberry Pi, in order to see the login prompt with both of those users, we uh, would like to do something here. I would like to change our default username that we have. Right now, it is Pi, and that's how the system comes. Uh, but in order to change that for us, we're going to change it to the name of our church, and we need to be able to uh, log in at the root user since it's not possible to rename an account while you're logged in into it. So to log in, we first have to enable it. So in order to do that, uh, let's go ahead and type the following command while logging as the Pi user. We'll do uh, sudo pass wd for password and root. So here we're going to be assigning a secure password for the root user and we can change that later if we wish. So there we go and retype. So now guys, what we need to do is actually log in as the root user. And then from there, we go back to the terminal and we will press a couple of commands and change the name of Pi from Pi to the name of our church, which is Cornerstone. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to log out of this session and uh, I'm not going to do it now because if I do, my recording is going to go off, but I will press it. I will save my recording and then press log out and then we're going to be logging in as the root user and go back to the terminal. All right, so we are now recording with my phone here to show you guys as the login screen. Now we have that now that we have created the City Hope user, as we can see here in the drop down menu, when we log in, we can see now City Hope and Pi, which is our current user. And then we see another one that says other. Now, what we're going to do, since we want to log in as the root user, we remember we have created a password now for it, so we're able to log in with it. We're going to go ahead and go to other from the, from the uh, drop-down menu, and we're going to be typing root and the password that we created, and that should get us logged in to the root user. Now, once in the root user, we're going to go to the terminal once again and as you can see there now it's no longer pi because we're now logged in to the root user so now this is where we get to type the commands that we need for the new user instead of pi so the command that we're going to be using here for changing the name pi would be user mod so we're going to be mod modifying and dash L signifies for the change of the username. And so the new name is going to be typed here. We're going to type cornerstone and then from what you old user from user pi. So that will be user mods space dash L new name, which is cornerstone pi enter. And we have a process that is being used by Pi. And so how do we kill all these processes? We go to kill all anything that is currently being used by user Pi. There we go. So now we have killed all the processes. Now let's try that again. User mod dash L cornerstone from Pi. Let's try it. And there we go. So no errors. And so now we should be able to have the name Cornerstone instead of Pi. So we're going to exit out of here and we're going to be logging out again. And since I am on the phone, I, sh let me, I, sh I should be able to show you guys that the new username should say Cornerstone. So here we are. Now we have three. Now we have 
the, well, the two main users here, City Hope and Cornerstone. There we are. So now we have the two users for the for the two churches here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and log into the City Hope and get them set up with whatever they need for their session. And that's it, guys. Well, um, they are set up to go. All they need is their browser. So I'm just gonna load up here the Chromium, make sure that it works well for them. And so there it is. And so now they should be able to log into their Google Drive. I already had it here as one of the frequent websites. And so there it goes. And even in case they need to go to YouTube as well and play any videos for their church as well, they should be able to do that now um, that they have their full username working and so with all those little changes there now both of us should be able to load up our own PowerPoint sessions and our own videos and everything else should be working great now um, no more um, Chromecast that is gonna be limited now with the power of Raspberry Pi we should be able to do so many things now so this is it for this video guys thank you for following uh, this little vlog idea and so if that helps anyone that that's great thank you so much for uh, listening today and tuning in today we'll see you next time